everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today we are going to begin the actual construction of the base on the MUN. Now I've scouted out a landing location that has some cathane at it, and uh, I had to re- I, I'll actually show you. I had to relaunch uh, my rover because with the new version 5 or 6 or whatever of cathane that's out, all the deposits were reset and it messed up where my rover was previously and that other rover was actually a little messed up from version 2.20 anyway so I just relaunched a new one this is where we're gonna be doing stuff my sky crane worked a lot better this time it didn't crash land but this area is relatively flat and right where this rover is parked I know there's cathane so we will be pretty well set I think I'm actually gonna try to land the modules off to the side here a little bit more though like over there where it looks a little bit flatter and nicer so we're gonna get started on that right now and that means we need to go ahead and launch the first module now I've actually taken the time to design something that I believe has enough Delta V to do this but I'm not sure so <laughs> we'll see I'm gonna I don't have any sort of sky crane design exactly yet like a reusable one so I'm pretty sure that is plenty of Delta V to get this done. Um, this is going to be the core module. It's got I rescaled the home clever Bobcat home legs to fit in here. You'll see those when we actually get there. Um, I rescaled a couple leg parts for that because they were three meter ones originally, and I actually needed them to be just the uh, the smaller two meter parts. So it's pretty easy to rescale. I had to do a little figuring out there. I didn't, I've never done that before, but it is super easy. So let's go ahead and pull up. I, I was testing this thing to make sure it could land. And we will be using MechJeb because these need to be fairly precise landings. I'm pretty sure all this is right. Let's go ahead and stop at stage one and engage the autopilot. And it's a little bit wobbly, but I should have started it up. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. maybe maybe not we'll see all right well our wobble has settled down a lot so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the whole transfer out because we've done transfers to the MUN before but uh, I don't I'm not the reason I'm not shuttling this over using my reusable transfer vehicle is really twofold the first reason is it'd be hard to design this with a docking port I could have done it with some sort of decoupler on it and stuff this but the real reason is that I don't have any sort of craft to land this like a reusable transfer vehicle yet I know I've seen Scott Manley's videos and he has in his reusable space program some sort of um, sky crane that he uses all the time but I don't really want to just like do what he did I want to do something a little bit different and I've been trying to get it to work but it has not been going smoothly so that might be a little bit before that reusable sky crane system that I'm working on is operational Alrighty, well we have arrived in orbit of the MUN, and I usually have not been using the landing autopilot, but considering how many things we're going to have to land in a relatively um, consistent area down here, I actually want to use it now. So I'm hoping that MechJeb will not fail me. I, I've tested it a couple of times, and it's been very hit or miss, so we'll see I guess, but... Right, we don't want to land exactly on top of that. We want to land a little bit to the south, so that will probably be good. I picked my target. Land at target. Let's see what happens here. So we still have the big stage attached because I want to crash it into the MUN and I want to get some of the braking out of that so we'll have a little more fuel left in the upper stages, which I think has enough fuel to actually deorbit and land on its own anyway. But I want to make sure that we are in good shape for that stuff. So... Uh, did we come into orbit backwards here? No, we didn't. It just, I don't know, it looks weird. I think the camera's flipped, yeah, the camera's flipped around or something. Alright, so that looks like a pretty good approach here, so we'll see how this works. So we're going to do a burn until this section is out of, I'm, well, it's not going to be out of fuel, but until this section has uh, lost its altitude, and then we'll go ahead and hit up the decoupler. Alright, is that good already? Is 
seven, four, three, two, one. Let's call that good enough for that stage because it's not very maneuverable. Why are we spinning so badly? Um, you're burning the wrong way there, my friend. Alright, so it's a. I checked the center of gravity. It seems to be pretty good. We're gonna get to use those weird little scaled down legs that I used in a minute, too. Hopefully. <laughs> it doesn't help that it's gonna be dark. I always end up coming on the dark side of things. Well, we can fire up the lights, I guess. How much battery power does this thing have? A lot, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's all battery down there. I forgot about that. Oh, that makes a kind of nifty little pattern there, the lights. I like that. All right, so that is our rover, I believe, there. We may end up having to move this thing just a little bit, because that doesn't look right to me at all. Well, I guess it says it's right. Yeah, predicted landing site looks kind of right. So there is the sky crane that I used to get this thing here. I turned it into debris, even though it still has fuel. I should probably just go crash that thing, actually. Get rid of it. I was just happy that it actually worked. So if this thing is accurate enough, this is how I'm going to be landing everything rather than manually landing. I have like six components that need to be landed in addition to this and then some rovers and all kinds of stuff to support the base and then our cathane stuff too. So consistency would be nice out of this. It seems promising so far. We're burning off that speed at a pretty good clip here. It's looking like we are still on target. Might overshoot just a little bit, it's looking like here. Is that the debris? Yeah, that's the debris. I think MechJeb did it. It's a matter of if it can actually set this thing down on the ground or not. Let's go ahead and... Oh, it flipped out the last time I deployed the gear, though. That might not be good. Well, we got to deploy the gear. Yeah, look, 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 look. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I think it's the exhaust hitting the landing leg. That could have probably been thought out a little bit better. But... That's why I wanted to deploy it while we were still kind of high up. I think it threw us off our target just a hair there, too. Uh, I don't think we're going to burn enough speed off here, Mech Jeb. Mech Jeb? You got to give it some more thrust here, man. We're running out of ground. <laughs> yep. So this is the problem I've been having, is that Mech Jeb basically can't land worth a damn for some reason. Huh. Alright, so I actually realized what the problem is with this lander, and I something I would never would have even thought of. I didn't know the physics actually even worked this way in this game. But when the landing legs are extended here, the little landing feet are directly under the engine. I didn't even consider that as a possibility. If they were a little farther away, I think the engines would probably still work, but it's uh, actually kind of accurately modeling physics where this is counteracting each other. So what we're going to have to do is do this in a way that I had not planned at all. And it's going to make it more important that we do this on the light side of the moon as well. So we're going to go ahead and orbit. Actually, I want to leave those deployed because I have a plan. So we're going to go ahead and just, uh, well, I guess we can just choose our target here first. I pick my target as right about there this time and uh, yeah this time I, I actually did go ahead and reload the quick save just because I, I don't usually do that but this time I was just kind of annoyed by my design flaw so I did so let's go ahead and get this side coming up on the day side here I have to do a couple orbits it looks like yeah, quite a few probably. But I do want to be on the day side because this is going to be a little bit tricky. Mech Jeb is going to automatically deploy the gear is part of the problem here. 
Oh, the sun. This, yeah, the night lasts forever on the moon. I forgot about that. But that means the day lasts forever, too. So once we get over to the day side, we'll be good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So let's go ahead and land at the target. Now, if I already have the legs deployed, Mech Jeb, of course, will not be able to deploy them. The animation takes quite a long time on these legs, so it's not like I can just cancel the animation and, and suck the legs back in. I've been thinking about this, and I ran a couple of you know trial runs here, and it did not go well. But I think what I can do is do the whole burn, or at least most of the burn, with this rocket here. Once we get to a low enough altitude, we can decouple, suck the gear back in, then we'll use these engines, and I think that will probably work, but I'm not sure. We need to keep an eye on fuel, too, because fuel is a concern at this point. So then we'll just land directly on the base of this instead of landing on the gear, which might break things, but hopefully won't. But we'll find out pretty soon here, I guess. I did not consider that. It's good to know. I'll keep that in mind for the future. That that works that way. Now this engine should do a pretty good job of getting these burns done. It's not very accurate because I don't have RCS. I wasn't intending to use this enormous rocket to do all this stuff. So yeah, it's having a little trouble fine-tuning the end here, isn't it? Well, it, it looks like it's going to get it done. Well, maybe it's going to get it done. It might just shake everything apart, too. It's getting closer. There we go. 0.6, 0.7, 0.6, 0.6, 0.5. That's going to take a little bit. Can I just juice it a little bit here myself? All right, so it looks like that's going to throw off our distance to target by a few meters, but it'll work. Come on, just finish the burn. We can correct the rest down there. I don't know if this is going to work, but I think it will work. How much power do we have? We have a lot of power, so I'm going to... Well, the lights aren't going to help because we're going to be on the daylight side anyway. We don't really need them. What are you doing, Rocket? Okay, it's time warping. It knows what it's doing, I suppose. I'm very hopeful we can get this whole mech jeb thing to work. Because it's going to make my life a lot easier. Now, it's also important. I want to rotate this whole assembly... This is not going to be that easy to rotate on the surface. I'm going to rotate this whole thing when the time warping is done here. Because these solar panels only are going to really be effective if they're facing this away. Alright, come on. Closing in here. Yeah, there's our rover. Oh man, don't hit the rover. Okay, there's the other thing too all right we're coming out of time whoa why would you auto save right here that's kind of a mean auto save game all right so our solar panels are going to be arranged correctly it looks like here how flat of an area is this it's a little hard to tell how close i got with my selection there it looks like it's going to be all right though Doing this on the day side is definitely better. Show me my giant targety thingy. So we should be just south of the rover, which is kind of what I want. Now my idea is like the gear doesn't get deployed until kind of the end stage here. So once we start the horizontal or the vertical drop rather I will redeploy the gear because the animation will take long enough that I don't think mech jeb will have a chance to do anything about it mech jeb is causing a little bit of an issue with this one but it's kind of important like I said to get these landings to be kind of consistent how much fuel is left in this thing not a lot well we have the whole bottom tank I think that's actually more than enough are we gonna start our vertical drop here in a second maybe Kind of getting low here. Our speed's getting pretty good, though. Hopefully, we'll still be high enough to drop this other thing. So let's start this. Animation. And decouple. Hopefully, that we'll have time to recover. 
I think this might work, except we're rotating a lot now. We need to be lined up right here. Where's the sun? There's the sun. So that's roughly square to the sun. Did the thing blow up? I don't know. I, something blew up. Yeah, there's crap landing everywhere. I think we're... Whoa! And the ground here looks... Oh god, the tank's rolling right towards us. Stupid orange tank, why would you survive? Alright, well, I apologize, Mech Jeff. That really wasn't your fault that all that happened before. So, how happy am I with everything here? Not entirely. I don't want to be near that tank for one thing. So I think what I'm going to do now that we're down on the ground is I'm going to take the rover out and just try to find, well, maybe I can see it from here, maybe without using the rover. Find a flatter spot to put the base at. Over there in that little gully was kind of originally what I had in mind, and that actually looks better. And we will be away from the stupid orange tank then too. So I wonder what the coordinates are over there. Can I pick a target like this? Mm. Nope. So let's just like get our coordinates locked off. See if we can hop this a little bit. I'm a little nervous about doing this. All right, throttle up just ever so much. SAS on. Actually, you know what I should really be doing here? Let's just land again real quick. Ooh, don't flip over, please. I should bring up the Translatron. Which one of these? Keep vertical, I believe. And we want to keep our speed. No, that's not right. That's not right. Keep surface. Keep surface. There we go. So... I need to unlock the as oh whoa 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 let's burn over that way easy does it easy does it um okay engines are puffing but that's all right we're just kind of hovering I guess I hope um correct 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 you didn't correct nothing broke um, yeah, let's turn that off. Ooh, easy, 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 easy. You know what? This is starting to look like a pretty good landing spot. <laughs> this thing does not want to move. It's just going to roll around in a circle here, too, isn't it? Uh, it's trying to wait for this to settle down so I can try to scooch it over. Easy, easy. Ugh. It's being ridiculous. At least it doesn't seem to be able to flip over that easy. Low gravity is not my friend right now. Right, just settle down. SAS on. That's soften the blow. SAS. Alright, solar panels look like they're still aligned pretty much right. SAS off. I kind of want to turn this around so we have a view of Kerbin from in the cabin too. This is, this is foolish though. It really is. Just try to ever so slightly hover. No, not that little thrust. Alright, we're almost there. Wrong way. No, don't flip over. Don't do it. Alright, are we good now? What does it look like from in here? Oh, that's a fine view. And it's kind of flattish here. It's like on a slant, but I think it's about as good as we're going to do in this region. And we're away from those orange tanks. Or just that one orange tank. And we're just out of the range. The physics, well, we're still technically in the physics range, I guess, for that. All right, well, I got this translatron thing figured out. It's actually pretty cool. We can just hover 
So, how do I get down safely at this point? I don't want to just drop, so I'm going to have to take over some control here. A little more thrust, a little more thrust, a little less thrust. Oh, hard bounce, but I think we're good. We turn off the SAS, turn it back on, try to get this stabilized. Come on. Alright, I think I'm going to call this my landing site right here. It's not exactly flat, but I think it will work. Yeah, so we'll call this good. Good enough. I wish that the landing gear was self-leveling. That'd be pretty sweet. Let's get the... Well, let's wait until this is done. I don't want to have too much going at once here. As I say, let's get these panels deployed and get these, uh, these things separated. Looking good. And... This is the last major thing I'm worried about here. Now that we have that on, I should be able to throttle up pretty much and not really go anywhere. And are they going to blow up? Doesn't look like there's going to be much debris left from that. That's good. And boom, boom. Cool. Nice. So let's get those lights fired up. Wow, there is still crap landing from that. Deploy and deploy. So now there's just a bajillion more landings to do. I have to get rovers out here and other stuff. But we have our first base on another planet. Even though it's just the moon. But it's still another planetoid at least. And even though I don't think this is particularly going to do anything. Because I don't have a dish pointed at it. We're going to go ahead and point that dish towards carbon. Alrighty, so I'm going to go prepare our next launch, and hopefully it'll go a little bit more smoothly than this one. But I did learn a lot. It's good. Alright, so this is what I've come up with as my new heavy construction rover. It has the Kerbal attachment system. It should be able to clear any modules that I'm going to be installing. Um, I put this tank here because I needed RCS fuel, and it counterbalances this part here. Um, so the thrust to weight center of mass thing was pretty much centered. So I think it will be able to land on the MUN. But I can't really test it because these engines could not... I mean, they could lift it up, but it was a little bit uncontrollable here on Kerbin. So uh, we'll find out, I guess, when we get to the MUN here. So let's go ahead and update the save file. And I believe that's enough Delta V to get all this done. I hope so. Let's set out on our merry way. And I had to take the little aerodynamic cones off of my usual rock. I did not fix the staging. I just realized I loaded it. I can see the fuel lines not hooked up. Okay, I'm going to go fix that. Be right back. All right, I think I fixed the staging. I'm not sure, but it looks about right. I was smart enough to strut this thing fairly well, too. So I think it will be all right on the way out of here. But we're not really going to know until I go. I know it increases the part count a lot, but I really like having these octagonal um, little structure things better. I think they look cooler. Uh, it's wobbling a fair amount, but I think it's actually partly clipped into the ground. Those fuel tanks disconnect down there? What is happening? What is this madness? Come on, man. Why is this rocket being so buggy? I don't know. We'll try launching and see what happens. Oh, it's controlling from the wrong thing. That's not good. I always forget with these, uh, it's controlling from the probe body on the rover, which means it thinks that up is sideways, which is not a good thing. Alright, um, where are you, little probe body? Come on, stay still, everybody here. There we go, engage autopilot, let's go. Alright, the flight is not looking too horrendous. We might just make it. Oh, look at that engine. Why? Why? That's like the last one to get disconnected. No, it's the first one to get disconnected. We might be okay. We might make it through this. They're all wiggling pretty bad, though. Oh, look at all this, too. Why does the sub-assembly loader have to do that? 
I really do hope that at some point the sub-assembly loader gets updated again, which it hasn't been in a long time. Um, but it would be pretty sweet if they would fix the strut and fuel line alignment thing that happens, because it's not good. I'd really like this rotation to stop, please. Oh, it's just getting worse. It's going to fly apart. It is going to fly apart. The SAS is not stabilizing it for some reason. We're out of control. Alright, so I gotta go fix all the struts. I don't know what the heck is wrong with this thing. Alright, well, I believe the struts are repaired. Everything should be good for launch this time. Like I was saying, I don't know why that happens with a sub-assembly loader. It's actually a pretty annoying thing that happens. I, it's still awfully wiggly. I should have strutted these tanks together, like, to the central thing too but I didn't oh well it'll probably be all right like I said those ones go first I don't know why though that one's shaking so much worse than everything else I'm sure these winglets are causing some of that oh that just collided into itself though lost the separatrons of course when I uh, got rid of those nose cones because they had separatrons on them and I did not put them back on but I think we're fine without them I'm hoping we're fine without them this rover is relatively light. It only weighs around three tons, I think. So it shouldn't take too much to get this out there. Well, we made it to our apple apps perfectly with those. So we shouldn't have any debris left around curve, and that worked out just about perfectly. So we should be able to do the whole finalizing our orbit here, transfer, and getting orbit around Minmus, and even, I mean, the MUN and even getting some of the deceleration for the landing done with this thing, so that's good news. Alrighty, another orbit achieved here, and a good amount of fuel left. That's more than enough to do most of the braking. So, we need to close this doohickey, and here's where we see how close we can actually land stuff together here. So, landing guidance, Auto saving lag. Now where is my base? Where are you base? There you are. Alright, so where do we want to set this? Pick it on the map and let's like kind of split the I don't want to be exactly on top of it. And call that good. So is that gonna be on the it's gonna be on the bright side for a little bit longer, not too much longer, but probably enough time. I don't really like doing these moon landings in the dark. Alright, so we've warped around here. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna kind of follow the same descent procedure as I did with the other, uh, with the main core of the base. Uh, meaning we're going to do a lot of the deorbiting and slowing down with this. And then towards the end we'll ditch this. Probably a little bit higher up this time so hopefully it all gets destroyed. But uh, ditch all that stuff and uh, come in with just this last stage hopefully. Wow, okay. That's where things get a little bit wacky. Trying to save the RCS for the descent so that I'll have a little bit finer control over things. And if we land this there successfully, it means that MechJeb will work just fine for getting this base built. Because that'll be three things that it's landed within a relatively close distance of each other. And I've kind of got the Delta V requirements figured out for these launches now. Would you just freaking do it? There you go. I did it myself. Jeez, man. All right, let's coast. Are you gonna time warp us or what you doing here, game? There it goes. This is getting itself oriented, I think, retrograde. And uh, like I said, I'm saving the RCS for the final little bit because I think it's gonna have more effect. And there's only 80 in this tank, so it's really not a lot. The tank is really here more as counterweight more than almost anything anyway what is it doing 
It is... Uh, I guess it's just... It knows what it's doing. I guess we'll drift over. Lovely curb and rise. Alright, we're coming in a little bit steeper, I think, than we did last time. There's Min Miss out there. That's a little nerve-wracking. I don't see any of our landmark. Oh, there we go. I was just about to say, I don't see any of our landmarks, but there they are. So that's the rover, and I think that bigger one's the base. I know space stations could show up as like a blue dot. I guess ships seem to, or rovers, show up as pink ones, and I guess that little shape means base. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to say this, because we got like 600 almost meters per second worth of delta V to get rid of. And I figure why not do it with this stage here. I'd, I'd like to overbuild things and have a little bit more than I need, because things tend to go wrong, you know? So when we get to the point where we're facing downwards, I'll probably ditch this thing. I do kind of have to start worrying about where my debris is landing, don't I? As we would be right now, we'd pretty much be landing right on top of the base, too. Alright, so I think... That's looking pretty good. I think we're going to overshoot our target just a little bit, though. Maybe not. start facing downwards more here I like doing this with the bigger engines because it gives me a lot more uh, time to get this stuff done but this is I'm gonna turn on the brakes real quick too so we don't roll once we do this uh, we are not slowing down enough all right we got this that was the physics of the base loading can I cut thrust? No, it's going to cut thrust. Alright, ditch that. I don't think it's going to be destroyed again, which is too bad. I end up with a lot of this crap lying around here. There's the other one over there. I had to have something... Well, I guess this thing can drag it off somewhere. Theoretically. Please blow up. Why are these engines not doing anything? Okay. I think we had another successful landing, it looks like. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I'm very excited by that. So, at this point, I think we can turn off the brakes. This is the last kind of question mark I have here is whether this part's going to work. I have this decoupler here. Should just drop that down. It did not break. Excellent. And I don't really want to control that. All right, let's back this bad boy up. And this thing is meant to go fly off and destroy itself to keep debris count down. Well, this is all going pretty well. This thing's going to be a little bit of a, hand, a handful, I think, here, um, just based on how it's moving right now. It's very light right now, and it has kind of a lot of thrust. I'd probably be better served disabling the steering and the motors on these middle wheels. Just doing four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering. Whoa, okay, it's got a lot of torque. Brake, 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 hoo hoo, this is thing, this thing, this thing is going to be hell on the moon, <laughs> as it turns out. Why do these wheels have so much torque? Let's disable another set of wheels, I suppose, here. And we'll leave the steering on on those ones, though. We'll just turn off the the juice. All right, how's that now? More controllable, good. It still has a lot of torque, but it's better. Especially in the forwards direction. Okay, that's a lot better. It's going to be slower, but it's safer. So I'm just going to park this right over here real quick.
Oh, God, don't do it. Don't do it. What kind of brakes does this thing have, man? I wish that the wheels kind of slid like they would in real life. Instead, like, they don't dig into the, the soil or whatever. That thing is still alive. Look at it go. Just tumbling along. That's kind of glitchy. I wonder how far it's going to get. It's a solar panel? That's really funny. Why is it... Ah, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't like switching around like this because stuff has a tendency to explode. Out of control. I did not put an antenna on this. Are you serious? I hope that was a solar panel. I think it was a solar panel that just exploded. How could I have forgotten to put an antenna on this? Oh, well, well I guess we got debris to get rid of here, too. So, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to land next. If I want to do a module or if I want to do the little excursion rover things. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Alrighty. Well, I'm using the same little lander sky crane thing that I used to deliver the, uh, the, ki the Cathane rover. And we're going to drop off these two little DM DEMV ant rovers. Those are going to be like little expeditionary rovers that the base will use. So let's go ahead and get this thing out to the launch pad here. I the de the delta V available for this rocket's going to be a little bit lower as you can see here, but I think it's still we've been ha having more than enough fuel, and I think it will be plenty still to get us there. Looks like we have two more of these guys here. We actually don't want them, so we are going to take a moment to empty the vessel here, which is a very nice feature of the crew manifest. And where is my pro body on this thing? Control from there. Let's turn off the receivers on these because I don't need that information. All right, that's all good. Ascent guidance, 125. That all looks fine and dandy. Let's go. And this launch should go well because this is pretty much the exact same thing that I already used to launch some other stuff out there. The rovers look a little on the wobbly side, but all in all, it looks all right. Well, the landing site is in the dark. For whatever reason, we seem to be draining power pretty quick. Are we going to get in the sun over here? That could be a problem. Why are we not... Why are we not getting a charge from the sun here? Because we're not facing the sun. That is a pretty big problem. I didn't put my usual solar panels on the sides of this thing. Well, darn. So we're just going to have to wait until we're lucky enough to catch some sunlight, I guess. Are we going to catch a charge here at some point? We might never catch a charge. <laughs> it's going to be a bit. Well, we have to warp for the daylight anyway. That's an oversight on my part. I've been a lot of those lately. Well, let's get the thing warped around here and hopefully we'll get to a point where we can face the sun. Unfortunately, we're in a very low orbit too, which means that this warp is going to take a while. All right, well, we got the teensiest, tiniest little ray of light, so I'm going to get this thing charged back up so the probe is alive again all is well. Still going to have the warp time warp problem, though. All right, I ended up boosting my orbit up to 100 uh, kilometers because it was a lot easier to get the, the time warping done, and it only costs like 40-something 40, 40 delta V, so it wasn't a big deal. I am going to try to land this thing pretty darn close to where the other stuff is because Kerbals are actually going to have to walk over to this, so I'd like it to be pretty close to the base there. I said I want to pick the target, so we're just going to land like right there, hopefully, without blowing up the base. That would be pretty sweet. And let's do this. So I believe 
the delta V cal calculations are somewhat inaccurate on this because for some reason it's not telling me what delta V I have from these engines. It's saying there's nothing for that stage, which is hopefully not true because otherwise these engines aren't going to fire and that might be an issue. And by might be, I mean it completely will be a really big problem if those engines don't fire. I don't know. They're attached directly there. They shouldn't need fuel lines or anything. I think it's just being stupid. And we were out of power, but it still fired. Yay! Except we're going to be out of power some more. Which is not so good. Well, keep that engine going just a little bit here, man. We need the power. Why did I not put batteries on this thing? If I just had a solar panel there, it wouldn't even be such a problem. You can keep puffing away at that as long as you want. That's a space station over there. Nice. So please do not go out of control here. This is nerve-wracking. Mechjeb has largely been disregarding the out-of-contact status, so... I think it's okay. I have no control over this ship while that happens, though. So, we'll see what happens, I guess. The solar panels are going to do a zero good on this approach, even when we get into the sun, because they're facing um, backwards, pretty much. And we're going to be coming in on the morning side here, so I'm hoping we'll be okay, but I really don't know. I don't know why this wasn't a problem before. I guess this, I, I, it is just because I didn't put those panels there, because they'd be getting light right now. Yeah, we're out of juice again. It's not saying I'm out of juice. Why am I not? I probably will as soon as the time warping stops say that I'm out of contact. No, the time it's not time warping, and it's not saying I'm out of contact, so I don't know what the heck's going on. Those things generate power, too. I don't know why they're not really contributing here very much, but they definitely aren't. All right, so are we... Okay, we're still coasting towards the deceleration. Oh, we were still time warping. Okay. Now we're out of power. Please still burn. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. We'll just assume that there's a battery somewhere. I don't know why that's happening like that. Strange. It's starting to get crowded around here. I actually kind of partially chose this place because of the view. I like how Kervin looks. Oh, and there's the space station flying above us. That's pretty nifty. Um, also, I chose this cathane deposit. I, I didn't really explain that. I put a cathane scanner on the space station, and so I wanted to scan the, you know, right under its orbit, the, the equator, because I figured that would probably be a pretty good way of figuring out what's, uh, what's cooking, and it would be easier to come up and down and so forth from that orbit as well. Just made sense to me. So are we overshooting like I wanted to? It looks like we're going to land pretty much where I wanted to. Eight meters off, according to this. I don't... Oh, that was all the physics loading again. All right, once we get down to 100 meters, I'm going to ditch this stage. Actually, once we turn kind of vertical again. Please work. I don't know why you wouldn't work. You're working. I'm going to deploy the gear myself just to be on the safe side and let's make sure we're controlling from the right spot still. Well that's going to be a little bit of a walk. It's only a few hundred meters. I could probably scooch this thing down just a little more. And the stupid orange tank didn't blow up again. Those orange tanks are tough. Stupid low gravity. I actually really like this design. It kind of looks cool too. I need to try to figure out how to scale this thing up to be my like main drop-off thingy. So I think we'll just jetpack over here is what we'll do. So let's go ahead and drop those off and crash this thing somewhere. 
me into that orange tank. I doubt I'm going to be able to do that, but that would be nice. I don't really care where we go, just as long as it's away from here. Whoa, lag fest. Alright, so what sort of trajectory is that on? A pretty good crashing one. Cool. That ought to work just fine. So, we need to go back to the base. Uh, base, where are you? Base. Please don't blow up. I've been having random blowy up issues, but... Oh, okay, that's alright. That didn't, that didn't count. Nothing bad happened there. Cool. So, we get to go on a little bit of an adventure. And we'll just send this dude out. Should go plant the... Oh, God, don't blow up. Okay, he's fine. He's not really meant to come in and out of this hatch because I have the uh, crew manifest system now. And there's an airlock that I'm going to be using. But obviously, we don't really have that quite yet. All right, my RCS is on. There we go. No. I really do want to be a little bit... Eh, maybe we should just walk. I'm not that great of an RCS pilot, maybe. I kind of want to just take it easy here, but... We'll just fly nice and easy. Oh, God, we're building up a lot of surface speed. Okay. We got this! No, we don't got this. This is, this is not as easy as I would have thought never done this before really on any sort of distance we just stop sliding it's amazing how far they can slide they just don't care alright so I'm just gonna give them a little couple puffs every so often try not build up too much forward speed these orange tanks are bugging me no idea why they're all surviving I gotta start dropping them from higher because otherwise it's this is going to be littered with orange tanks. I can drag them out of range. I don't really like to just end flights. What did the, is that thing standing up? What is going on over there? Hey, we landed nicely for once. Cool. Let's put away the RCS. How fast can we run? Not fast. This takes a minute. This definitely takes a minute. Well, I'm glad these things deployed so nicely. Does it matter that the crew hatch isn't open? Oh, damn it. Are you serious? Okay. It didn't. Oh, oh God. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've never used one of these on the MUN. It's crazy. Let's deploy the wheels. And why not? We'll raise the antenna, even though it doesn't really matter. I kind of want to go check this out real quick. It looks suspicious to me. How the hell did this happen? Yeah, it is like kind of like standing on edge. How could that have ever happened? It's almost like the thing at the loading screen actually. Oh there it goes. It fell over now. That was weird. That was very very weird. Alright so we have a good number of stuff landed. We need to start expanding that base though. So let's slowly turn this around. Okay it actually handles really nice on the moon. Let's go park this thing back at the base, and I'll pick up the other one, and we'll be back in a minute. And I'm going to turn that off, because I don't have the GPS set up on the planet yet. Alright, I designed this, I'm calling it the MSTV, the uh, Lunar Surface Transfer Vehicle. It's basically got a docking port on the bottom and a, just engines to land stuff on the MUN. So this is going to be responsible for landing modules for the base, any equipment that we need and stuff in the future. So this will hopefully alleviate some of the orange tank issues that I'm having around. Uh... Clear the launch pad. Why? It's like, I thought I clicked it, but 
whatever. I was just testing to see if it could land. It can kind of land on Kerbin, but this upper stage only has like a thrust to weight ratio of about, um, I think it was like 0.79 when it's all fueled up. So it's a little bit on the dicey side, but on the MUN, it will be more than enough, I'm sure. So we're going to just go to, I've been doing 120, that's been working out just fine. Now I have those engines firing because why carry the dead weight? There's room for them to fire, so I have fuel lines running from this central tank, so this is like a, it's all asparagus up all the way to these ones too. And it looks like this is working out just fine. I really like this. This is the home uh, cockpit. I really like this command pod. It's pretty nifty in here. There's the MUN. That's where we're going. Sounds like something just separated. There it goes. Alrighty, I'll meet you at the MUN. Alright, well, we have arrived at the MUN, and we are going to be ditching this, assuming I can find the decoupler. Because I don't want to have all that dead weight hanging around. Are there solar panels on this? There are batteries. We should probably deorbit this thing first, then, just to prevent space junk. We're nearly facing retrograde already. That's very convenient. And I think we'll be able to clear the ship. And good enough. Alright, goodbye, thingamajiggy. So now we have to do the rendezvous and whatnot, and that will take a minute. Alrighty, well we have arrived at the station. I'm trying to get a docking port, and we can go ahead and dock. This is where this is going to be spending most of its time, is out here now. So that's kind of cool that it's here. And let's go ahead and... Just turn on the docking autopilot and let it do it let it do its thing. I still didn't set up an action group, I just realized, to shut down the engines, which is something I need to do, because I, I guess I can edit that in the save. I always like to have action groups set up to shut down engines for ships that regularly dock at stations so I don't accidentally screw up and uh blast the station, because that's not good. All right, well, we are coming in to finish up this docking procedure here. I've been using the engines to kind of boost because I noticed Mech Jeb is kind of horrible at this. and So I, just, I let it do the uh, alignment and then I'll just hit the engines every so often to kind of shove my way forward. And I was a little bit fast, but it worked. Arrest this wiggliness. That Soyuz likes to shake a lot. All right, so we have... It kind of looks all crazy. <laughs> that thing looks silly. But it's arrived at its station, so we are good to go for future landings of modules. I don't think I'm going to do any today because this is already running pretty long. But there is something I want to go do down on the surface here. So let's go ahead and go back to the Space Center right quick. We need to go plant a flag for our new base, I think. And our base is right here. I need to come up with a better name for the base, too. Just calling it Mooner 1 for now, but I want to come up with an actual name for it. Not good at naming things. That always makes me nervous. Now, I don't have the airlock, so they still have to just kind of fall out of this thing in a non-dignified sort of fashion. I just kind of crawl down here. Uh, turn on your RCS, man. There you go. There we go. Not too bad. Now, where are my rovers? They're parked over here somewhere. It's dark, so that's not going to make it easy. There they are. Where do I actually want to put a flag? I should wait till it's light, actually. So I think I'm going to do that. I'll be back in a minute when it's light. We'll warp time. Alright, well, I think we'll just put a flag over here, because it's going to be out of the way of the base, but it will still commemorate the founding of the base. Let's, uh, oh, I want my RCS pack. There we go. Let's hop over here. This seems like a pretty good spot. Slow it down. There we go. Nice and easy. Yeah, this seems like a fine spot. So, 
Plant flag. Ooh, we got an eclipse going on behind us while we're doing it too. That's exciting. So the site name is gonna be what? You know what? I like Star Trek, and they have something called Tycho City in Star Trek, which is on the moon. The moon. Um, it's in a crater. We're not in a crater, but that will work for this. Uh, founded. Well, I'll just put today's date: June twenty. 2013 Alrighty, cool good work man so that's gonna pretty much do it for today cuz this has already gone pretty long I think in the next episode we'll probably take the time to launch some more stuff down here so these guys have a better place to live and we'll get to utilize that ship we just launched over here so that's probably my plan for for next time so thanks guys for watching and I will see you later